After the mysterious perishment of his grandfather, a boy is led back to the island of his childhood stories. There, he discovers the existence of individuals with special abilities and teams up with them to face terrible creatures. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, from 2016. On the way home, a boy named Jacob Portman calls his grandfather, who warns him to stay away from the house, as it is no longer safe. Jake doesn't worry too much, as Mr. Abraham has been diagnosed with dementia. On the other hand, the driver is surprised when a strange guy with white eyes appears in front of her car, causing Shelley to swerve quickly. When he arrived at the house, he found all the lights off. He is surprised to find the back door forcibly broken down. While Shelley searches the car for a revolver, Jake approaches the broken fence in the backyard, where he finds a flashlight smeared with blood. On investigating further, the boy finds his grandfather lying in the woods, missing his eyes. He immediately calls the emergency services, but is interrupted by Mr. Abe, who demands that the boy go to the island, in the gap of September 3, 1943. What's more, he claims that he should have told his grandson the whole truth, who doesn't understand what those words mean. Suddenly, Shelley appears in the woods and with her some kind of giant creature, so the woman quickly turns around and shoots at the monster. The next day, Jake tells his psychologist that he may be going mad, as he saw things the night before that don't exist. What's more, the police and the doctors don't agree on the motive behind what took his grandfather's life. In one of Abe's stories, he tells of living in an orphanage with other children, where there was a very intelligent principal called Miss Peregrine, who turned into a bird. The children there were special because they had powers. On the other hand, Abraham went to the home just to keep himself safe, as he had no peculiarities. In the present day, Jacob wakes up frightened, without noticing the reflection of a monster outside the house. Later, the boy receives a surprise birthday party, and gets a book left by his grandfather, in which he finds a postcard from Cairnholm, and a message from Miss Peregrine telling Abe to visit her soon, but the card was delivered two years ago. In view of this, the boy asks his psychologist for advice, who suggests that he visit the orphanage as a way of saying goodbye to his grandfather. On landing in Wales, Jake and his father stay in a very strange pub, but the boy wants to find the orphanage immediately. So Mr. Portman pays some teenagers to guide his son. Worm and Dee decide to take a shortcut to the site, but ask the boy to cross a stream. However, he ends up sinking his feet into a swamp, causing the boys to laugh. After crossing a wood, he finds the orphanage completely abandoned. Jacob returns to the bar, where Mr. Augie claims that the place was bombed on September 3, 1943, and that none of the inhabitants survived. Upon returning to the orphanage, the boy is surprised when a girl appears in front of him, frightening him. Suddenly, two more children appear and something makes the ceiling shake. In addition, two masked boys are watching him, so Jake runs into the yard, but ends up tripping and fainting. Later, the boy wakes up with a little girl carrying him on her back. As he recovers, Jacob realizes that all the children from Abe's stories are standing in front of him. Everyone is waiting for a safe moment to go into the loop, so they guide the boy into a cave. However, Jake gets scared and runs back to the bar. When he enters the bar, the manager doesn't recognize him and prevents him from going up to the rooms. Suddenly, plates start flying around the place on their own. Olive, a homely girl, appears and drags the boy outside the establishment. She uses her hands to set fire to the door of the bar, so they escape in a cart. Jake believes he is special too, as the plates in the place have started to fly by themselves, but he discovers that Miller did it because he can turn invisible. The boy doesn't understand how the children are alive after the accident, so they explain that the loop allows them to restart the same day, September 3, 1943. Upon arriving at the orphanage, the boy is greeted by Miss Peregrine. They meet Fiona in the garden, the little girl uses her mind to make a carrot grow bigger. The principal explains that there are more special orphanages around the world that house extraordinary children. Peregrine is a peculiar imbrin type, who can turn into a bird and manipulate time. So she chose a safe day to create the loop, allowing them to experience the same day over and over again. For this reason, she is responsible for looking after the children. After that, the boy is introduced again to the twins, Claire, Millard and Hugh, who can control a swarm of bees. While the boy is introduced to other members of the orphanage, Emma asks the boy to tie a rope around her waist so that she can rescue the squirrel that falls from the tree every day. She then removes her iron boots, and her gravitational power makes her float to the top of the tree. Soon after, the girl confesses that Abe helped her by holding the rope, and that she believed they were very close. Jake goes to Enoch's room, who advises him not to stay at the orphanage, making it clear that he is his rival. Jacob is startled to realize that the boy is putting a heart inside an inanimate puppet, which comes to life and starts attacking another puppet, the fight ending when one of them lands a fatal blow on the other. Later, 
Emma reveals to Jake that Grandpa Abraham visited other orphanages in other loops while he was traveling, but she didn't know the reason for the visits. During dinner, everyone is interrupted when Hugh's bees escape, but he puts on his net hat to trap them. Claire is embarrassed to eat in front of the newcomer, as she has a mouth behind her head, which she uses to quickly devour a chicken thigh. Then, out of the blue, they all start arguing because Enoch believes that Jake shouldn't stay at the orphanage, since he's not a peculiar child and this hurts Emma. Suddenly, they are interrupted when the phone rings, and Claire claims that the principal always answers the phone, even though she already knows what the call is about. After answering the call, Peregrine hears Abe's voice on the other end of the line, anxious for news of his friends. Later, Horace shows his ability to mirror dreams, in one of which the boy dreamt that Jake would come home. He also dreams of another Imbran, but everyone believes it was just a bad dream. It is then that another dream makes Jacob and Emma feel awkward, as the two are about to kiss, but the principal interrupts the scene by inviting everyone to go outside during a storm. They put on masks and wait until German planes start appearing in the sky and one of them fires bombs at the orphanage. However, before the projectile hits the house, Miss Peregrine adjusts her watch, causing the day to start again. Before leaving home, the boy steals a piece of mail intended for the principal without anyone noticing. Emma then accompanies him to the exit of the loop, where Jake takes a photo with her to keep as a souvenir. He invites her to stay on his timeline, but the girl claims that she would age the years she was trapped in the loop. The couple is interrupted when a bird hits the cave, and the girl believes that the creature is the Imbran from Horace's dream. However, she can't be sure that it's the same person, since if it's wounded it can't transform into a human. Emma decides to take her inside the orphanage and Jacob comes out of the loop. On the other side, he meets his father and claims that he lost track of time because he was with Worm and Dee all day. However, on the way, they meet the boys and a farmer who accuses them of slaughtering his sheep. Mr. Portman believes in his son's innocence, but the boys claim they didn't see Jacob that day. Jake's father is furious and forbids him to walk alone on the island. In the letter the boy stole, his grandfather warns him that a guy called Baron is behind the loops and has already found Miss Avocet's home. The next day, father and son go to the beach and meet a photographer who is looking for birds near the cave. Later, they return to the bar, where they discover that Mr. Augie is missing, so the boy offers to go and look for him, but his father forbids him. Faced with this situation, Jake waits for the man to go to sleep before sneaking out. Downstairs, he finds the photographer whispering to the owner, so he decides to climb out of the window. When he arrives at the orphanage, he finds Peregrine looking after Miss Avocet, and claims that her loop is in Blackpool, revealing that he has read Abe's personal letter to the principal. The boy questions her because he believes his grandfather was involved with dangerous people, but the woman refuses to reveal the truth. So the newcomer asks his rival for help, who takes him to meet Victor, since he can break the rules by telling the boy the whole truth without being punished. When Jacob enters the mysterious boy's room, he finds him lying lifeless on the bed, so Enoch takes a heart and puts it in his chest. Suddenly, the boy stands up like a puppet and Jake realizes that he has no eyes, which makes him run out of the room. Meanwhile, Emma and the new guy get on a boat and head for a place where she can tell him the truth. Suddenly, the girl jumps into the water, even though her shoes are made of lead and make her sink quickly. At the same moment, Jacob dives into the sea, and his friend releases an oxygen bubble that surrounds his head, allowing him to breathe underwater. They then enter a shipwreck, where there are several skulls of people who sank there. Upon entering a room, the girl closes the door and produces a jet with thousands of air bubbles, causing all the water in the room to be expelled, so they can breathe just like on the surface. Soon after, the girl hands him a box left by Abe, in which there is a map with the location of all the loops in the world. In addition, there is a photograph in which Jacob identifies the man he saw the night his grandfather was attacked. Emma claims that they are evil people who are looking for the loops to destroy everyone inside. She also reveals that Jacob is also peculiar, since only a special person can enter a time loop. Even so, the boy doesn't believe that he can be special, so Emma suggests that they return to the orphanage so that she can prove it. Then they watch from a wall as Miss Peregrine goes to the edge of a cliff. Suddenly, a giant monster with huge claws appears, but the principal can't see it because it's invisible. However, she knows exactly where it is going to be, so she shoots an arrow straight through its head. Jake, on the other hand, can see the creature, just like his grandfather, and this is the special ability he received from his ancestor. The hollow ghasts are terrible monsters who were once human, and their aim is to destroy everyone. A long time ago, Mr. Baron and a team of scientists who were peculiarly unhappy about living in the loops wanted to find the secret of immortality. So they captured a Imbran and put it in a machine connected to them by electric cables, which turned him and his companions into hollow-gassed beings. 
Baron discovered that by consuming the eyes of other peculiars, especially children, he could become human again. The villain no longer needs to consume eyes, but some of his partners still do, so they're looking for the loops. They are interrupted when they discover that Miss Avocet has awakened. The woman claims that no one is safe, because the hollow ghasts have placed a machine in the Blackpool loop, meaning that they still intend to find the power of immortality. Jake believes that they are already on the island, but there are no signs of any white-eyed people there. So Peregrine decides that they should leave the house as soon as possible. Emma asks Jacob to help them on the mission, as he is the only one who can see the hollow ghasts, but he claims he can't stay there, so her friend is hurt. Later, everyone in the village receives the news that Mr. Augie has fallen off a cliff in a tragedy similar to Grandpa Abe's, as he too is missing his eyes. At the crime scene, everyone begins to suspect that there is a hollow ghast on the island, so the photographer says that a blind man who came on the same ferry as him is very suspicious. Hearing this, the boy run towards the loop and his father can't reach him, but the photographer offers to chase him. Upon entering the cave, Jake realizes that he has been followed by the guy, who is also peculiar because he was able to enter the cave. At the same moment, he starts thanking the boy, claiming that it's very difficult to find loops these days, and that he's been chasing him for some time. Then the man shows that his power is to change shape, he becomes the boy's psychologist, who was Mr. Baron all along. The evil man puts a blade to the boy's neck and forces him to follow him. At the same time, Peregrine and the children prepare all their bags to leave the place, but are interrupted by a noise at the door. On checking, the principal is surprised to see a man threatening Jake. The woman quickly reassures the children that Baron intends to take her to a meeting and that they should all go to one of the rooms in the home, only then will he release the boy. Besides, one of the hollow ghasts will soon arrive, so they are in great danger. Before surrendering to her adversary, Miss Peregrine says goodbye to her children, crying. As soon as the man releases his prisoner, the principal turns into a bird and enters the cage. After that, Jake joins the other children and they all decide to stay inside the house to protect themselves from the hollow ghast, so they close all the doors and windows. Suddenly, the phone rings. When he answers, Jacob realizes that his grandfather is on the other end of the line. The boy claims that he misses Abraham, even though he hasn't met him yet. After putting up furniture to secure the door, the children and Miss Avocet prepare for the monster's arrival. However, the woman is interrupted when the creature's claws pull her brutally. At the same moment, Jake rushes to grab the crossbow the principal was using, while the monster invades the room. The hollow ghast man grabs Enoch around the waist and shakes the poor boy from side to side, but Jacob still tries to aim his crossbow at him. The children start to leave the place and head for the attic, without realizing that the creature is about to grab Enoch's eyes, but Jake manages to hit the enemy squarely, knocking it away. After entering the basement, they lock the door to delay their pursuer. However, they realize that the air raid is coming, so they decide to escape through the window. To get them down from the roof, Fiona makes a tree branch grow so high that it comes close to the roof of the house. Then the creature gets closer and closer, at the same time as German planes are about to release their bombs. Jake prepares to use his crossbow, without realizing that the bomb is close to the orphanage. Then Emma takes off her shoes, hugs the boy, and the two of them jump out of the house seconds before the projectile hits the residence along with the monster. Then the loop closes, as Peregrine isn't there to restart the day. On the beach, the youngsters decide that they need to save the principal, who is probably in the Blackpool loop. In this situation, they decide to take the wrecked ship to reach their destination, so Emma uses her powers to remove all the water from inside the rooms, and using the peculiarities of each one, they manage to make the boat rise to the surface. If Mr. Baron is defeated, Jake will be able to return to his time and see his grandfather again, but not the Peregrine children. Emma believes that the boy should return to his family after the mission. So they get emotional, and just as they're about to kiss, Enoch interrupts them by opening the door. The boy claims that if the children don't get out of the loop before it closes, they will be trapped in January 2016. The youngsters arrive at an amusement park which they believe is the entrance to the loop. Millard then turns invisible and makes his way to Blackpool with Emma and Jake. When they enter the main hall, they hide in the stands and watch the hollow ghasts and the other evil peculiars. Emma removes her shoes and floats into the room, tied by a rope. She taunts the villain, saying that they have destroyed their friend and that they want their principal back. Quickly, Mr. Baron's henchmen and the hollow ghasts chase the children to the pier. They get closer and closer when the girl gets caught in an electric wire. However, she manages to escape just as a train appears, slowing down the enemies. On one of the rides in the park, Enoch prepares his trap. At the same time, the children climb onto the equipment and start throwing snowballs in the direction of the monsters, followed by cotton candy, so that the enemies are visible to everyone. 
Then the skeletons that were inside the ship appear transformed into puppets and start attacking the creatures. One of the hollow ghasts is knocked over by a machine, so the skeletons jump on him and attack him with all their might. Another monster is also knocked out by the walking puppets. One of Enoch's puppets manages to grab his enemy's head on the ferris wheel, causing his neck to break under the force of gravity. However, the other beast is defeating all the skeletons that appear in front of him, but Bronwyn manages to grab a unicorn from the carousel and throws it towards the monster, who is hit hard by the unicorn's horn. Inside the loop, Mr. Baron is surprised by Emma who uses her breath to throw him against the wall. Hugh uses his bees to attack the other two adults, the man ends up falling into the pool, but the woman uses her tail to jump onto a platform and starts throwing knives at the youngsters. While Baron teases the children, Enoch tries to attack him, but ends up being knocked out easily. However, Olive appears and touches the man's suit, causing it to catch fire instantly. But the guy removes his costume and attacks the girl. Jake tries to hit him with an arrow, but misses. On the other hand, Bronwyn manages to hit him with a chair, knocking him down. Still, Baron gets up once again and steals Jacob's crossbow, who charges at him with an arrow in his hand, but is easily knocked out. Horace then tries to use his peculiarity of dreams to blind the man, but fails miserably. After that, the man heads for the Imbrines in order to finish his experiment. Soon after, the other henchman grabs one of the children and throws her into the pool, using his power to freeze the water. However, Fiona appears and throws seeds on the ground. Suddenly, a plant begins to grow from the grains, enveloping the enemy until it is immobilized. On finding Baron, Emma manages to push him away from the door using her breath, so Jake enters the room where the prisoners are. At the same time, the other henchman manages to get rid of the plants. He then locates Olive and begins to freeze her, as the girl's flame has no effect on him. Enoch awakens and uses his power to revive a giant toy elephant, so the marionette goes after the man. Meanwhile, the other woman jumps into the audience to attack the other children, but ends up being bitten by Claire. The twins then show her their gruesome face, turning her to stone. Enoch rushes to Olive's rescue, declaring that he never realized how lucky he was to have her around. Emma loses her breath and Mr. Baron manages to get rid of her, so he heads towards the room where the prisoners are and starts breaking down the door with an axe. Jacob quickly manages to unlock the puzzle that locked the cage door. When the man enters the room, the boy opens the cage door and the birds attack the man. In the amusement park, one of the hollow ghasts stands up again. Meanwhile, Miss Peregrine frees herself and attacks the enemy's face, leaving the mark of her claws before fleeing the scene. Hearing children's voices approaching the room, Baron uses his power to transform himself into Jake, then pretends to be the boy to confuse his friends. Realizing that one of the hollow ghasts has invaded the room, the real Jacob claims that he can prove his identity, since only he can see the monsters. At the same time, the creature grabs Baron by mistake. Before he can stop his accomplice from attacking him, the evil man ends up losing his own eyes. Enoch quickly throws his crossbow at Jake, who hits the creature straight on. The children then hurry to say goodbye to Jacob, as the loop is about to close. Afterwards, the boy goes to his grandfather's house, where he reveals his whole adventure on the island. Abe gives his grandson a map, saying that he can go after his companions again. Jake finds the loop closest to his home, which is in the California desert, and then uses it to get to the Tokyo Loop. He then joins the Navy until he finally finds his friends. On the wrecked ship, he receives a kiss from Emma while the principal of the orphanage accompanies them over the sky. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.